Hello, Christina Rizzo. Thanks for listening. Hope you all are doing well. Happy Thursday. This is May 23rd, year of our Lord, 2024. And a few uh, videos back, I did a, uh, some videos on um, uh, the origins in the occult about Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, it's also on my radio show that I also did, but I went deep into the origins. If you want to find more information about that, you can either go to Polite Leader or go to AA.com, and I'm sure there's a section where you can read about these guys being involved with the occult. So the reason I'm in t uh, today, I was recently in a, another community group in church. Uh, it's called uh, Recovery, Righteous Recovery. And I wanted to scope it out, see what it was about. Turns out uh, they were more of a branch of Celebrate Recovery, uh, supposedly a faith-based or Christian way of doing a 12-step program. Now, um, one of my uh, couple of things about this is with 12-step programs, and, and I'll read through the 12 steps with you, and they do have... Bible verses to uh, back it up uh, based on uh, the NIV translation in, in Scripture. If we are supposed to be free uh, in Christ, um, I mean, I can understand support groups. Uh, you know, some people need the extra help. and But that's where accountability comes in, which a lot of these programs really don't have. Um, I can tell you the class that I was in, there were very few of us, and pretty much all she did was an introductory, um, and then read the steps, again, number one, no mention of Jesus, just at a higher power, and that sounds more like a cult in New Age to me, despite of the fact in the Celebrate Recovery uh, website where they have the same passage, or step, um, they back it up with scripture. I can't remember the net, but I will read that in a moment. Secondly, again, with the steps about forgiveness, yes, um, yes, it's important we should ask for forgiveness. Uh, again, the in these steps, despite of the fact it's supposed to be Christian, uh, Christ also told us to or commanded us to forgive others. So uh, that's also complete, and the Holy Spirit is the only one that can change you. Now, I can understand that there are struggles. I mean, we all have our struggles, and even times when we fall hard because we're still in this flesh until we're reunited, reunited those of us who are uh, believers, reunited in Christ with our new bodies, then we won't have uh, the sinful nature. Um but uh, we are to rely on the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit guides us, and when we sin, he convicts us, even though we, um, and this is, could be unintentional, or it could uh, could be intentional, yet refuse to repent until uh, the Holy Spirit either really alarms us, and when we refuse to listen like a hard-headed child, then he departs, okay, so that's the consequences of that <clears throat> so it's kind of amazing that um you know we have a, a christian slash secularized because we want to appease the word I, I don't know what the point of of the celebrate recovery well i have an idea but the founder rick warren i mean that's a uh that's a skeptic in itself because he's one of those secret friendly uh founders or uh, church of accommodation where uh, they have sermons to make people feel comfortable and happy no mention of sin or judgment or hell um, in any of the sermons so how are these people ever going to know uh, the gospel when they've never heard it excuse me but I'm telling the truth, Satan is always busy. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and read. Um, this is supposed to be their 12-step 
from their website of Celebrate Recovery. And uh, I did go to one a long time ago. Uh, it was some issue that I was struggling with. I won't get into uh, what the uh, sin was. So uh, they, they do have different ca categories. You got uh, sexual sins. You got um, social sins like uh, drunkenness and um, uh, substance abuse. And then there are uh, mental health issues like depression um, or anger issues. Uh, again, social issues um, where they have those type of groups, you know, to help support you. Um, I don't remember if a Bible was ever open. Uh, the one lady that I had spoken to, because I think they pair by gender. Like if it's a sponsor or, you know, some type of, I guess these are supposed to be the accountability partners. It should be men and men, women with women. And even if you are friends with the opposite sex in the program or this program or social group or whatever, support group, excuse me, not social, support group, then you're not to share uh, based on the last one I was in. Uh, I went to one, and I really wasn't pleased because uh, it was more like a a condemnation more other than a support, even though she was struggling with the same sin. So uh, here are the 12 steps that they have from this uh, biblical celebrate recovery. Number one, it says, we admit we were powerless over addictions and compulsive behaviors. I guess that's uh, anger and uh, emotional issues. That our lives have become unmanageable. Romans 7.18 I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. Okay, this was something Apostle Paul has struggled with, and he talked about this throughout Romans 7. Uh, again, because we're in this flesh, in a fallen world, all us all coming from Adam. So, yes, we're uh, struggling with this uh, sinful nature. So far, so good. Now, this is where they're messed up. Number two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Okay, let's see what Bible verse they use for this one. Philippians 2.13 For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purposes. Okay, no mention of the gospel. No mention of Christ. Yes, the scripture is there. Um, but if you're going by overcoming an addiction or compulsive, compulsive behavior, as they mentioned in step one, it's your flesh can't do it. If you try hard, the worst is going to get. Um, Yes, there are people do are there people who quit a bad habit cold turkey? Sure. Most likely they go to the next or another bad habit. For example, had a close relative that quit smoking. Guess what she went into next? Drinking a lot of soda, which is just as detrimental to the health. So it's more like a reform, not being free from uh, this sin. Okay. Number three, we made a decision to turn our lives and will over to the care of God. Now, in AA, they say, as we understand them, because, you know, they'll, they'll mention Jesus, or you can mention Jesus, but it can be the divine one, he being fully God and fully man. He, they're usually talking about some other Jesus that doesn't exist. Or, you know, in addition to world religions that, again, are all about works, which has nothing to do with biblical Christianity. Okay, it's grace and faith. When you uh, repent and believe in the gospel. Knowing that we cannot do it itself, we are 
doomed to hell due to the fall of Adam and Jesus God incarnated came to save us for our sins and uh, and from death meaning hell for those who of uh, us have the faith to believe Romans 12 1 therefore I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to God this is your spiritual act of worship again I don't know how this coincides um, we're talking to because they have holy and pleasing but uh, making a decision uh, the decision is when you choose to believe in the gospel number four we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves yeah this is mixing this is really sad this is mixing um secular and, and biblical Christianity and this oil and water don't mix like that. Lamentations 340. Let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the Lord. Number five, we admit to God ourselves and another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. James 516 Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Okay. All right. I think this is the forgiveness part. You know, when we ask others for forgiveness. Again, it's not complete because Jesus commanded us to also uh, not just ask for forgiveness, but forgive others. Number six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. James 4.10, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Seven, we humbly ask him to remove our all our so our shortcomings. Okay, and this one, him is capitalized, so I'm guessing they're talking about Jesus, the God of the Bible. First John 1 9. If we confess our sins. He is faithful and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Good. All right. Some of these are, you know, beneficial. But again, uh, yeah, it, it's you still have to depend solely on the Holy Spirit. Number eight, we made a list of all persons. Okay, this is when we're asking for forgiveness from others we had harm and became willing to make amends to them all Luke 6 31 do to others as you would have them do unto you that's that's not what this sentence is saying okay yeah um, they could have chosen a different scripture for that one Number nine, we may direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them and others. Matthew 5, 23 through 24. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there, remember that your brother has done something against you, leave your gift there in the altar, in front of the altar, altar first and go and be reconciled to your brother then come and offer your gift mm. my understanding of the scripture is if another sister offends me whether it's in church or you know outside of church and instead of talking about it to another sister uh, well instead of gossiping about it well instead of going to the sister that offended me directly I gossip and slander that sister to another sister that's my understanding of the scripture what Jesus meant by this Lord you know it could be talking about 28 uh, 
Matthew. Yeah. Okay. I don't think about that. Holy Spirit has to help me with that one. Holy Spirit, you have to help me with that. Um, 10. We continue to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful and don't fall. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Okay, so this is more like uh, carrying and crucifying, carrying the cross and crucifying the flesh daily. That's what this sounds like. I mean, as far as number 10 goes, when it says personal inventory. Yeah, I'm, I'm tempted to actually go to the founder and change all of this. And make this Christ base because Jesus is the only one that can save. And so far, after reading 10 of these, he is not mentioned. His name is not mentioned. We have pronouns that are capitalized with the assumption that's who they're talking about. But if it's a new believer, um, most likely he won't know. Or maybe he will. Um, 11. We saw through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge for his will for us and power to carry it out. Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Last one. Having a spiritual experience. Are we talking about the Holy Spirit here? I doubt it. As the result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others. Practice what message? Are you talking about the gospel? And practice these principles. Yeah, I'm tempted to write these people and say, uh, well, the founder was Rick Warren. Most likely he'll ignore me. Um, okay, then I'll come back. Galatians 6 1. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you are a spiritually should restore them gently, but watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Okay, so more like hypocrisy, so if I, uh, a sister decides to commit some type of sin, and if I'm not careful, then I may stumble. Okay, so. Well, first, uh, before approaching a brother a, a sister about a sin, because it could be out of care, or you could be misunderstanding something, uh, it's best to talk to the Holy Spirit first, and then talk to and then talk, and then when you have peace from him then I mean that's what I would strongly suggest because what the church tends to do in our own pride and self-righteousness that we're ready to get the rod and the whip out the first thing people say to us I I know I've done it um and other sisters have done it to me. And, uh, like, thanks for being my judge. <laughs> and vice versa. So, um, that's all I have to say. Let me know your thoughts on that. Because uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, not saying Christians should separate themselves from the we are in the world. Okay. Um, but we are different for a reason. So, um, that's all I have about this. This is interesting. I'll probably do my next radio show uh, talking about this as I go deeper into it uh, with some additional examples and deep origins um, what Rick Warren and the Church of Accommodation was thinking when they came up with this. Again, if you're a part of this program and it's helping you, if that maybe the Holy Spirit is using that to help you, God bless you, okay? 
I just think there are just some things that are kind of mixed match and Jesus should be the center of that because he's the only one that can free us from that bondage of not being slave to sin, not struggle, but being a slave to it where you just immediately can't stop and depend on him on a daily basis. Christina Renso, thanks for listening. Pray for our nation, our brothers and sisters under the persecuted church. Uh, and um, pray for Israel and the situation in the Middle East. May the Lord bless you, keep you, and his light shine upon you. And I'll talk to you as soon as the Lord wills it.